In this video, we'll see the anatomical structures, the bones and the sutures of skull and PNS as visualized on X-ray, AP and lateral view. My name is Dr. Aishwarya. We'll also look into some landmarks. First, we'll look at the bones of the calvaria or the cranial vault. This is the frontal bone in anterior aspect. Posterior superior aspect, we have two parietal bones. Lateral aspect, we have temporal bones. And in the posterior aspect, we have the occipital bone. Now coming to bones of face and the cranial fossa. This is the sphenoid bone. This is the nasal bone, the maxilla and the mandible. Separating these bones, we have the sutures. The one in the center is the sagittal suture, visualized well on AP view. And this is the coronal suture, bilaterally, visualized on AP and lateral. Yes, this is the coronal suture. And now, faintly, the posterior lambdoid suture is also visualized on AP view and lateral view. Laterally, we have the temporal suture. We'll look at some landmarks helpful in taking the x-rays. Base of the nasal bone, there is nasion. The forwardmost point on the forehead is the glabella. The point where both coronal sutures meet the sagittal suture is the bregma. The point where both lambdoid sutures meet the sagittal suture is the lambda. Highest point on the sagittal suture is the vertex. And the posterior most point is the ineon on the occipital bone. Then we have asterion which is a meeting point of parietal, occipital and the temporal bone. Next we have terion which is an edge shaped bony landmark at the junction of frontal, sphenoid, parietal and squamous part of temporal bone. We have a set of standard lines which are drawn along which the X-ray beam has to be oriented in CT or X-ray. We have the external auditory meatus or the external ear. Here is the orbit, the vertex and momentum of the mandible. Using these standard points, we draw lines like orbito, meatal, line, mento, meatal line. Next we have mento vertical line and so on. Few important internal landmarks which we don't see externally are the basion which is the tip of clivus forming anterior part of foramen magnum, ophistion part of occipital bone, posterior part of foramen magnum. Now we'll look into the paranasal sinuses as seen on x-ray. Here we can see the frontal sinuses. Since they are filled with air, they look darker than the bone. Here we have two paired maxillary sinuses. The one in blue is the ethmoid sinus and the one in green is the sphenoid sinus. Frontal, maxillary, ethmoid and sphenoid sinus. We have some additional structures which are visualized on AP view of X-ray. Superior orbital ridge. Here is the inferior orbital ridge. Next, we can see through the orbit, we can see the greater wing of sphenoid on both sides. The petrous bone. The mastoid air cells. Crista galli, the part of ethmoid bone. The cribriform plate. Bony nasal septum bony part of inferior turbinate. Faintly visualized in the AP view is the C2 vertebral body or the axis bone and its process that is dense. I'll show you again. Here you can see the dense and axis. Coming to additional structures on lateral view, we can see clivus, we can see dorsum cellae, the tuberculum cellae and the fossa which contains Pituitary, that is cella tersica. We can see the petrous ridge. 
on lateral view we can see the skull base this is the anterior cranial fossa middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa here we can see the temporo mandibular joint and the other joint which we can see are atlanto occipital joint and here we can see the atlanto axial joint these three joints we can see on the skull x-ray that's all are the basic of x-ray skull and pns anatomy for more videos follow radiology doodles if you want videos on any radiology or radio anatomy topics please comment down below i will try to make videos on the same thank you